out shooting with the Leica M11 and the Hasselblad 907X and CFE 100C. I figured since I am a rare person that has access to two roughly $8,000 plus cameras, I feel super blessed, but I also feel like it's almost like my duty because I've had a lot of questions from people like, hey, uh, a lot of people are really excited about this camera. They're asking, should they sell their Leica stuff to get something like this? And so today I wanted to make a deep dive going into both showing the image quality between some really nice Leica stuff with Leica lenses and then using the actual Hasselblad with the Hasselblad lenses to give you a good idea what it's actually like in practice to use both of these systems as they are both incredibly unique, two of the most unique cameras that you can purchase in 2024. So here's what it actually is like to use both of these. Right off the bat, these things are obviously very, very different but they are similar in the fact that they are just so completely unique from a typical modern mirrorless camera or a modern DSLR camera. The Leica here has a true coincident rangefinder, I think it's called, where you're actually using two different optical units here to be able to line something up and that's how you look through this. You're not seeing anything digital as you're working through that. With the Hasselblad here, you are, if you're using the 907X, you are actually using a screen but it is a, it's such a different experience than looking through a normal screen. You're using this mainly as a waist level thing or you're using it with like a 500 series camera or something and you can use any of their viewfinders with that. But also, obviously these are just two of the most beautiful cameras that I have ever seen. They're kind of something that like my wife wouldn't mind having on our coffee table or something. They just look like things that you would use as a prop in a movie or something because they're both just so beautiful. And the fact that they are high, high-end image-making tools as well, I definitely look at this camera and I wanna pick it up. And so I will use this more often than I will use some of my other cameras that are technically superior tools. I will say that I've been using this camera daily, almost every, I, I bring this camera to pick up my kids from school. I bring this camera with me to go get coffee. It is small enough uh, especially, you know, if you remove the hood or whatever, this is a 55 millimeter f 2.5 lens, kind of the best all around lens for this system, I would think. It's just really, really small, especially for a medium format camera. They're very, very different, but in some ways, in terms of their design aesthetic, and obviously, again, their price point, they are in a way kind of similar. I'll also add that they are also based very, very similarly off of their film counterparts. So the vintage film cameras look identical to this camera other than some very, very minor things. And same thing with this, obviously, because it works exactly with my 500CM. So all of the styling and everything is just so well placed into that vintage aesthetic, which is, I guess, an annoying term or whatever, but they did a really, really good job of making this look vintage, but perform in a modern way. So obviously part of this is going to be price. I believe at the time of filming, the Hasselblad comes in at, I think, 8200 which, again, is not cheap by any means. The Leica comes in a little bit more, actually, at $9,000, but they're definitely not cheap. And I do want to say, too, that, like, if you're looking at this and lusting after it like I have, I, it took me a long, long time to be able to justify buying a Leica myself. And ever since the CFE 50C came out, uh, not even the 907X version, but the original 50C that worked only on the 500CM and only worked as a digital back. I have wanted that system. And it was only recently, right before Hasselblad actually reached out, that I was going to sell off my GFX stuff and just buy uh, the 50 megapixel version of this because it had dropped in price enough on the used market that I could somehow sort of justify if I sold enough stuff. And so it's one of those things where it does make amazing images. It makes you want to pick it up and use it, all that kind of stuff. But it is 100% like it's not a need, it's a want. And if you can justify having something like this, then absolutely more power to you. I, I absolutely adore both of these cameras, but there are other, plenty of other uh, really incredible image making tools. And uh, just because you, see this kind of stuff. And I know this comes from a weird position because I have both of these things, uh, but it's not something you need, need, need to have. So don't go into debt or anything like that to get these cameras because they are expensive, expensive things. And 
I like to have nice things, but I also don't own like a motorcycle and I don't have other really expensive hobbies. So that's where I can kind of like justify the fact that I do this for a living too, to have things like this. Now, another way that these are actually pretty similar is the fact that they are both very high resolution cameras. So the M11 here is a 60 megapixel camera where the Hasselblad here is a 102, I believe, megapixel camera. And that means that they are very dense in their pixels, but it also means that they have a lot of sharpness. Uh, they also have a really, really good dynamic range, both of them. Um, and especially the Hasselblad has a lot of like color fidelity um, and just a lot of really, really amazing color science that both of these have going into them. Another part of that too is that because these are so high resolution, you have to be a little bit more careful about things like shutter speed and how easily you're handling them. Neither of these have IBIS, so you know you're going to want to have a higher shutter speed if you're really wanting to maximize the resolution out of these things. And also just having the correct, I guess, expectations of what these are really made for. Uh, I am someone that does a lot of movement and things like that with the Leica. I can shoot street with it. I can shoot it wide open at f1.4 and do a pretty good job nailing moving subjects. But generally, the, for the most part, a lot of people are going to be not using these in as crazy fast pace of environments in the same way, at least. You can zone focus with both of these. Um, you can obviously stop down and get things. But um, a lot of the way that both of these are going to be used, this is going to be more of like a travel street camera in that you can get a lot of motion and things like that. And the way I use this is more of like, I'm using it for portraits, I'm using it for landscapes, I'm using it for still life kind of scenes. But the autofocus here isn't to where you can be continuously tracking or anything. So I'm definitely not gonna be using it at weddings when someone's walking towards me down the aisle. And I'm gonna use it at specific times where 
it calls for it. So knowing, I guess, the limitations of these things, especially considering their price point, I think is very, very important. So thanks so much for watching. If you're interested in the presets I used for these photos, you can check them out in the description down below. Give this video a like if it was useful, subscribe if you haven't already, and then check out one of the videos here for more Leica or Hasselblad content.